Hello and welcome back. And that is right. If you are a WD My Cloud user and you've had the system knocking around for a number of years, let's face it, they're super affordable. They're a really straightforward, easy way to have your own personal cloud. You may have logged in and re looked at the screen and then suddenly realized a message like the one above my head here on the screen has appeared. It's the one that's talking about My Cloud and something big that's changing. Now, if you've purchased a My Cloud in the last five, six, seven, eight years, you may have set the device up and kind of ignored it. You've left it in the corner, maybe for Plex, maybe for simple backups, maybe you're a Mac, Mac user that just wants to send your time machine backups to it. One way or another, you may have had it for a long time and never really regularly look at it. But today you've looked at it and you've seen that message above me there. Now, what this is, is regarding uh, a vulnerability that was highlighted in WD My Cloud OS version three. They're up to version five now. This is quite an old version. If you look at the news, you start to see all the way along this story that's been kind of knocking around now for about five to six months. So this story here, for example, uh, from PC Mag is from November here. Uh, a lot more detailed story here over on Bleeping Computer from December 2021. And ultimately, it's about a vulnerability in this older version of the uh, MyCloud program that it's just, it's either impossible to fix or it is inherent into that version. And WD have been urging users to upgrade to the latest version, OS 5. But it's not that straightforward because much like it says in that notification there, it is dependent on your generation of the MyCloud system. If we go down, we can find out that WD are advising, of, of course, that you should upgrade that firmware, but what's really important is that I, uh, MyCloud, after a given date, is actually going to disable remote access on those systems with OS 3. So if you're running uh, a WD MyCloud with uh, the OS 3 version, there's gonna come a point in 2022 where you will not be able to remote access it using the WD system um, remotely. You'll be able to use it on the local area network and the ethernet, but external access will be completely impossible via those WD means. And the only way to reestablish that um, access is to upgrade to the latest version OS 5. So I know what you're thinking, who cares? I can just install OS 5. Screw it, just do it, get it done. Unfortunately, it's not that straightforward because OS 5 is a much more demanding program and OS 5 for my cloud isn't actually available on all systems and legacy devices, which is a fancy way of saying old devices, can't support it. As you can see, going through this list, depending on which version of MyCloud you have, and all of the links that I'm going to show you today will be listed in the description below, you can see that not all of them, numbers of them, have got how to update, which is great. Some of them say not available, and some are just flat out not supported because they don't have that open-ended architecture and much more closed systems like these old TV ones. So, if you are an owner of a system that's not supported, there is um, a voucher system in place with WD where you can head over to their MyCloud uh, system there and they talk about how if you're an old user, you can get a voucher towards purchasing a new and updated version, a uh, new and updated NAS that does have OS 5 to replace your current NAS over at their store. So again, that's something you can look into there. Just go into the FAQ to learn more. But today's video has been a hell of an intro uh, to this subject. And again, we will talk a little bit about um, OS 5 in more detail in a video coming very, very soon. But today I'm just gonna guide you through the process of upgrading your WD My Cloud NAS up to the latest version if you haven't already been doing it. Because unlike regular security patches, which may have been implemented automatically, big version changes, much like changing from Windows XP to Vista to uh, Windows 7 to 8.1 to 10 and now to 11, aren't compulsory. They always have to be actioned manually because they're massive updates that can generally... Uh, you know, change certain application support. So the system very rarely will allow that to be automated. There's a very good chance that you are still running the old OS version unless you've gone in manually. So going ahead past this alert and this notification on screen, you can see there on the right of the screen, new OS available 
is available there. However, this may not be visible on your screen. If it's not on your screen immediately, go into settings and then go into here in firmware update. And from firmware update, you can go ahead and look at the latest version. As you can see, I'm utilizing a much older version of WD. We've kind of rolled this system back to its system format settings to show this off. This NAS originally had version three on it and we actually managed to roll it even further back. It is worth remembering that once you upgrade to version five, it can't be rolled back. It's there and that's as it stops. You can't um, downgrade the system, so do bear that in mind. So you can either update here to the latest version or if on your main screen, you may have the option to upgrade the firmware there, which will automatically flick over. And as you can see, you'll be highlighted there on screen about guiding you through the process. So let's do that together now. So we're gonna click next, and it will let you know that if there are apps that are supported in OS 5, they will be reinstated onto the system. And of course, as mentioned, you cannot revert back to OS 3 if you go ahead with this. So let's go ahead and click next. And again, it gives you some bits and bobs about the information on creating the account and linking the new account. And it's just letting you know that the system will be inaccessible for a certain period of time during this update. So let's go ahead and start the upgrade there in the background. Now, while it does that, I just want to talk a little bit about OS 5. Because whenever I've been talking about uh, WD NAS over these years, a lot of the time when we've talked about it, it's always kind of gone... WD is this lovely, convenient NAS option. It's you know good for the noobs. It's it does two or three things very very well. Uh, when a lot of other NAS brands out there like Synology and QNAP do lots and lots of things very well, the WD MyCloud uh, NAS series has always seemingly done a small handful of things, but did them exceedingly well in terms of user friendly um, setup and ease of use. Now that logic has been extended quite significantly in. Um, OS 5, where a lot of the kind of techie stuff has really been hidden away. And a lot of the uh, security setup, like for example, you can see it at the top left of the screen, you can see that I'm not accessing technically as an IP identity. I'm accessing it via mycloud.com bouncing there when we go back to the NAS, as you can see. Now we're going into the IP. So as this goes ahead and starts downloading the upgrade and it's going to install those upgrades, it's also worth highlighting that there are updated applications. There are new applications available uh, as well as WD's own applications. There's the third-party NAS applications that have been added. And WD have really kind of jazzed things up a little bit. It's still nowhere near as colourful app and tool and service-wise as a lot of the other brands I've talked about, but they have added a few extra home and business tools as well. So again, I do recommend you check some of those out. They've not had a vast amount, but they've added a few. Um, heading back to there, we can see that the upgrade's in process. So what I'm going to do is fast forward to the installation of that upgrade and show you what you see next. As you can see there on screen, the upgrade has taken hold there. Now the system is going to reboot there in the background. And you might hear the beep during this, but normally this system takes around two to three minutes to fully reboot and give you access to the graphical user interface. So just wait a couple of minutes. So let's log back into our WD MyCloud NAS with OS 5. Now the system has rebooted. Let's go ahead and log in there. As you can see there, end license agreement there on screen. So we're going to go ahead and agree to that. As you can see there, the system's now asking me to insert a password there because, again, we set it up with no password for the ease of this video. But I don't recommend it. Also bear in mind that we are using the admin password here, something you shouldn't do, so make sure you create a secondary password password a, a password locked account after this just to make sure that you um, in, maintain the system security there again I hate seagulls you can probably hear those there in the background so we're going to go in and log in there and again now it's asking us to update uh, local passwords there and again we'll come back to that on the next video when we go through OS 3 Again, it's asking us to set up the time. Again, don't worry, this won't affect the files and stuff that you've got on the system. But again, we'll go into more details later. If you want to set up the remote access, of course, you can go into it and set it up there. 
And again, if you want to create cloud access or connect it with your existing cloud access, you can go ahead and set that up there. That's totally up to you. And again, you can choose whether you want to share the analytics as you always do or choose not to, if so be it. And that's really it. We can go ahead and log now into our newly updated user interface for OS5. The design's still very, very similar, of course, but now with an improved backend in terms of security uh, and more. And again, as mentioned, a few extra applications have now been added some of which are there for multimedia, some of them for business backups there, connecting with your S3 buckets and more, and all of them ready and available to install at the click of a button. And your shares and files will still be maintained with everything there in place. But that's how easy it is to upgrade. That's the reason you may have to upgrade. I hope if you are running a WD My Cloud NAS that you've updated as quickly as you can. Because again, much like a lot of other malware or encrypting or just flat out delete attempts at NAS systems or servers in general. Once it becomes more public domain and known across news read sources, generally that means that these attacks increase in frequency as the attackers suddenly realize that it may be running out of time to do it. So if you are a WD My Cloud user watching this video, get on those updates, okay? But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Do stay tuned for a WDOS5 overview video coming very, very soon. Stay tuned for that. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you on the next video.